Bob Nagy here, AB5N, with another equipment review. I always say that in the beginning, huh? Well, there are so many QRP radios from all over the globe out there right now. You've got the KX3 from the guys out in California, fantastic rig, SDR really in a box. You've got the MCHF, that interesting SDR kit radio from the U uh, United Kingdom. You've got the Ubidex, that's from India, made it in a women's co-op over there, very interesting motherboard. Uh, you've got um, Elad Duo, that's an Italian SDR, a little QRP radio that can be used in the base station or out in the field. All of these are putting out 5 to 10 watts. And sometimes, you know, Papa needs some shoes. You're gonna, you want to add some power to these things. And you've got options sometimes from the manufacturers themselves. They're gorgeous pieces of equipment, but they have price tags that reflect how nice they really are. And on the other end, you've got the sort of 40, 30 watt range, up to 50 watt range of bricks made by uh, independent folks. There's some options and uh, they're not bad, but they're on the lower power end of the spectrum. The ones made by the manufacturers tend to be on the higher power end of the spectrum. Um, now, I was looking for something in the middle. I've got all of these radios and I have several different smaller power bricks, but I was looking for something that put out more power, that the price was a little bit more, but I didn't really want to dump $1,000 on a power amplifier, so I became aware of the Zigu XPA125, which is a, a Price-wise, it's sort of just over the middle point up towards the grand level, but it's you know, $600-ish, depending, you know, might go up or down, probably down. But it is a 125-watt amplifier, and it looked pretty interesting. It's a new entry into the U.S. market, so it's uh, definitely an early adopter thing. Um, the case looks really decent in manufacture. The quality of the metal and the uh, ventilation holes are really nice with two forced air fans coming in there. It's got a really nice display with all of the information that you, you need to know on it. It has a built-in antenna tuner, which handles more of the wide range of antennas. You know, our antenna tuners in a lot of these newer rigs are really down to, if you've got an antenna that's pretty resonant, it'll take care of it, but nothing that's really three to one or something like that. I gotta turn my talkie down here. But this tuner does handle, it seems, out to three to one, and it's really made quite nicely. Um, the amplifier is also protected input and output wise. If you got you know, SWR issues or something like that, or you have it set on the wrong band, it'll trip out on it and protect those finals. And most importantly, the final transistors themselves are a set of Mitsubishi finals, which are commonly available, road tested, and they are 120 watt devices each. They're, you know, maximum output's 120 watts each. So you're looking at 240 watt maximum output, theoretically, from this pair of transistors. They're running it at maximum power, they say, or 125 is what the amplifier is, is marked. So that means they've got plenty of headroom, they're running, you know, nice linear area of operation. And that's a good thing for longevity. Um, the amplifier has lots of gain. They're running this thing flat out. These transistors have a lot of inherent gain. So in the push-pull configuration, a little bit of power tickles these babies up to lots of power output. And it doesn't seem to be restricted. <laughs> so uh, you can key down here with, you know, I'll show you some a little bit of wattage and come up with, oh, you're up in the 140, 150 watt range up there, uh, depending on your antenna and such. So your average power output is going to be really nice on sideband. Pushing this with a, you know, say a 5, 5 to 10 watt radio, your average powers on sideband are going to really average more like a 150 watt radio than a 100 watt radio. And that's, that's really nice. So let's take a look at the uh, specs on the amplifier here. Well, the frequency range goes all the way down to 500 kilohertz up to 50 megahertz. Again, it says it's 125 watts output power. Temperature operating, 55C, okay. It keeps itself cool, though. We've got 13 dB of gain, but I can tell you it's a little on the higher side, as you saw from two watts in there. Uh, standby current, half an amp, roughly 30 amp transmit maximum power output. That sounds about right. Uh, the tuner's range, 160 to 30 megahertz and uh, so 160 meters to 30 megahertz but you see the z range right there it covers a nice wide range of antennas so it's more than a lot of the common uh, uh, transceivers that are being released right now with restricted ability to tune more uh, off resonant antennas and the size in millimeters there it's a, it's a nice size and has a handle on top just a quick look at the voltage input chart for changing the bands on the unit. This is a very standard setup, and you could really set up an external multi-position switch with a resistor network to have an external 
band switch or you mate to a lot of radios that do put out these voltage levels for the bands that they're on. Now let's go back to looking at the amplifier in general. The, uh, it's made to mate with the Zigu QRP radios, so some of the other QRP radios do not provide that kind of stepped voltage output. And I'm sure there'll be uh, people addressing that with, with uh, the outputs from the other radios into a stepped voltage output to control this. Of course, you can control it manually, and it does seem to have RF sense on the transmit, plus you can hard key it through the uh, DIN connector on the back with your PTT out from the QRP radios. Um, now let's take a look at the amplifier from inside and out. So in conclusion, if you're looking for a power amp that's in that in-between zone, uh, between the prices of the small 30-40 watters and the uh, matching amplifiers that are running 100 watts, something like that, looking for something in the middle price-wise, but of course the performance is more near the top, the Zego XPA125 really seems to fit that bill. And now I'm going to talk about the downsides of the amplifier that I found, and then we'll review the upsides again. It has a slow RXTX turnover time. I have not gone in and tried to modify this yet. You know, it's safe to do it that way, nice and slow. But you're not going to be doing any high-speed CW break-in on this amplifier. It's just not going to happen. A lot of us are running digital modes now, and you can, you know, one second switch over time is, is absolutely okay, a little less than a second. So for a lot of us, it's going to work just fine. Documentation is rather minimal. <laughs> but, you know, that's, it's pretty straightforward how this thing operates. And we don't know about the support from Zigu as far as domestic uh, repair facilities and that kind of stuff. They're getting established here. They're setting up distribution and probably repair centers. And they want to be known as a high quality company. So just as of yet, we don't know what that status is. The upsides of the, the amp are, it's got lots of headroom on those finals. So they're going to be really happy campers, probably not ever pop on you. And it's got a ton of gain. So running, I'm running a watt and a half, two watts in on digital modes, 40, 50, 60 watts out. You run your, your five watts out on sideband. Like I said, your average power outputs are really going to be average in a much higher level than an average 100 watt box with knobs radio. Um, I really like the Mitsubishi Finals. I looked and they're available inexpensively as sets on eBay and everywhere else. So if you had to replace them, you can. It's got two huge blower fans on the side, which are therm uh, thermostatically controlled. And it just comes on at, I don't know, about 38 degrees C or something like that and starts blowing through there and it steps speeds. It makes a little bit of noise, uh, you know, but you gotta keep those finals happy. <clears throat> the display shows everything you need to know on it. I like it. It's not a color display. It's not a touch display. But it looks good and it tells you everything you need to know. And the form factor of the box is rather nice with the handle on top. All the cutouts for the blowers going through the side. And the circuit boards look like they're really up to current quality standards. You know, when you're hooking up, say, jumpers of coax in there, you could do it by just soldering onto the board pads. But they're all connected. They're really done nicely. The boards look to be first class, so it should hold up. So if you're an early adopter willing to, take, willing to take a little bit of risk, you know, not knowing whether support is out there for this yet, this is a high performance per dollar amplifier and it's been operating very smoothly so far. So I'm going to give it two thumbs up and we'll see you next time in another review here from AB5N. Take care.